Just 10 miles south of Socorro and over an hour south of Albuquerque off US 380 East, you will find the Stallion Gate entrance to the White Sands Missile Range, where twice a year the public is able to visit the Trinity site. When the site is open, it brings people in droves, and understandably so, as the events at this site changed the course of human history. It was in this remote locale where the first atomic bomb was detonated on July 16, 1945, after being scrupulously and arduously developed in Los Alamos as part of the Manhattan Project. After the successful testing of the atom bomb at Trinity, it would go on to be used against Japan during World War II with the hopes of bringing an end to this long, devastating war. But also with its unveiling would be the dawn of a new era. Its monumental place in history, along with its limited access, spurs the curiosity of thousands, and twice a year visitors make the pilgrimage to Trinity. This year, I am one of them. It is hard to put into words the feeling you get when standing at ground zero of the detonation site, and no doubt it resonates differently for each person here. Beyond the marker standing in the center of the site, on the two days Trinity opens to the public, photos are exhibited on the fencing surrounding the perimeter. On site was author and historian Jim Eccles, who was there to answer questions from the crowd and enlighten us on the events of that day in July of 1945. What was it about this location that made it the prime spot for, for the testing? Well, Los Alamos looked at a lot of different sites. Uh, the sand dunes up in Colorado, Catalina Island off the west coast of California, Padre Island in Texas. So a lot of different sites, Gallup and Grants came up the lava field. But this was already under the control of the Alamogordo bombing range. And so they looked at a couple of places here, and it had a number of advantages. It's fairly close to Los Alamos. It was already under the control of the government, wide open desert, low population densities, railroad out there to the west, a good highway connecting to Los Alamos. And so in late 44, they decided to come down here and set this site aside as the test site. Okay, so it kind of was a lot of planning beforehand to get right, to that exactly. point. exactly. Okay, and so on that day, you know, can you walk me through what that was like? Who, was, who were the people that were okay. you know, privileged to be here at that moment in time? Um, you know, the top secret security nobody knew about what was happening here, right? Right. First of all, let's say that the bomb was placed on top of a 100-foot steel tower here and detonated at the top of the tower. The nearest people were at bunkers 10,000 yards to the south, west, and north. The south one was where Oppenheimer was located. Mm. And it's also where the guys were that threw the switch to trigger the bomb, all the instrumentation, and all those kinds of things. A large group of people, several hundred, were down at base camp, which is 10 miles to the southwest. That's where General Groves watched from. Okay. He couldn't be in the same place as Oppenheimer was if there was anything dangerous going on. Mm -hmm. Are there accounts of what the immediate reaction was? So there's a lot of different uh, points of view from different uh, aspects because of the different locations. Right. And then also the reaction for what they'd done. Right. It worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've solved this problem. It's time to move on. And so a lot of these guys immediately take off back to Los Alamos. Many of them head to the Pacific to Tinian, where they're actually going to assemble the bombs to use against Japan. Wow. So there wasn't really a big lapse of time between. No, it I mean happening. it's immediately. Let's move on to the next step. Wow. The next step is to use it. Okay, that's that's crazy. I mean, imagine being in that that environment and seeing something that has never happened on the face of the planet. Still wrapping my head around all the details Jim just shared with me, I head for the Schmidt McDonald Ranch House. Initially built in 1913 by German immigrant and homesteader Franz Schmidt, the ranch was sold to George McDonald, who lived there with his family from the 1920s until 1942, when the McDonalds were forced to vacate the property when it became part of the Almogordo Bombing and Gunnery Range. The home stood abandoned until personnel with the Manhattan Project determined it would be the site for the assembly of the plutonium core of the bomb. Upon entry to the house, you immediately are drawn into the plutonium assembly room. In addition to the informative photographs and articles on exhibit at the house, in walking from room to room, you can't help but notice the aged floorboards, the beautiful but worn stencils and paint on the walls. Walls that hold a detailed account of history few of us can fathom. Standing and looking north to the detonation site, I try to imagine what the people at Trinity experienced that day the day the world changed forever. Two days a year, Trinity site opens to the public, typically the first Saturday of April and October. This is a free event where no reservations are required. Check the White Sands Missile Range website for details. 
You may go on your own, but you may want to look into guided tours hosted by organizations or museums like the Los Alamos Historical Museum.